you do it right. One of the things that I want to make sure you guys understand is a little bit about what learning from leaders is really all about. Learning from leaders is a show about bringing leaders from around the country that have great ideas, great tools, great techniques of helping you grow your business right now. One of the things that I'll always promise you I'll bring you are people that are leaders in their industry that have not just theory, they have factual evidence and proof that what they've done works because they're living it. Every day, they're living it. My guest today, I've been friends with for a number of years. We've shared a, 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 a masterminds together, for which is a, a group of guys working together to build their business. We've, we've been together as friends for a while in business, and I've watched Jonathan grow a business from um, literally when he was in high school, he started in this stuff, and then today he's doing so much more. But it's an industry that I think a lot of you will be real surprised at. My guest today is Jonathan Potoshnik, his company, City Turf. City Turf is a lawn care in, a company up in the Collin County area. And he's not just any lawn care company. I tried to describe this earlier to someone, and I said, you know, here's the thing. He's developed a company that has over a thousand clients just in the Collin County area. And he's it's so successful that people are paying him every single month in a way that is systematized, automatic, continuity based. That's unique for that industry. And so I wanted to make sure that I brought Jonathan Potoshnik on the air. Jonathan, thank you for joining Good me. Good to see you, Pat. Well, one of the things I want to get into right away is your story. I know that you started out uh, pretty young in this. Right. So tell me how you got into lawn care. Um, I didn't want to make three bucks an hour working at Dairy Queen or Brookshire's in the town we grew up in, which was Wiley, and I wanted to make more money. So I talked my parents into, when I was about 14, driving me around and dropping me off at people's homes to mow their yards. So I started mowing yards in high school. Uh, actually just before high school in the eighth grade. So that's really what got me into it. And that's what got me the flavor for being an entrepreneur and the desire to go out and build something. Well, I know that, that you were a little bit unique because you didn't stop at just one or two yards. No. I mean, as I understand it, you were like outpacing your superintendent for income or something when you graduated high school? Yeah, in high school I had uh, quite a few yards and I had a couple employees, my brother being one of them, he was helping me out. So by the time I was a senior, I was uh, making more money than my teachers were making and finding it a little challenging to make it to all my classes because I had so much work. And so my senior year of high school, I had a little bit of a reputation for missing work or missing school. So if I wasn't at school, they knew I was out mowing yards. Oh, that's, good. Yeah. that's cute. But now you went on to college and you stepped, uh, what was your story? You stepped out of that industry? Yeah, I got burned out. So I started it out, and it, it was a, a business, but not necessarily a real business in that. I had a couple guys, but I'm still the guy out there doing all the work. I'm mowing the yards. I'm the one that stays 30 minutes and talks to the client after we mow their yard. So I really got burned out, and I was getting a degree in uh, computer information systems. I was, in, I was going to college, and so I was just worn out, and I, and I had ambitions to start yet another business. And, you know, all through high school, I was dabbling in all kinds of different things. So I was very much entrepreneurial, and I just really got to the point I was burned out and I got out of the lawn care business completely and I got my degree and all through college I was building and selling software for a company I was working for and so I really got the taste for the computer business and so I was in that market for a while and completely out of the lawn care business. So how did you get into the lawn care? How did you get back into it? Well, I, I to skip a big part of the story, I ended up working with this fella that was uh, one of my best friends in the eighth grade, and he was building a janitorial company, and I started working with him on his company while I was doing computer consulting. And really, one day he came in, I think, into my office and said, hey, I just saw this advertisement in the newspaper. We can buy this little business in the lawn care, you know, lawn care industry. Let's go look at it. It's in Dallas. And I'm like, eh, okay, let's do it. So we went and looked at it. Needless to say, by the time the, the day was over, We'd spent 7000 bucks and bought a business that had $50,000 in accounts. Just a little bitty business, but now we're in the lawn care business. All the while, I'm building computer systems, and I'm working with him on this janitorial company. And that got me back in. It really just thought we'd build a nice little stream of income that would produce a few hundred thousand dollars a year. It'd just be this nice little business. And then I got the itch again. I got that. I realized, yeah, you know, hey, I really like this industry. I really like this business. And... Um, not really part of that business any longer, and it developed into what 
is now city turf, and we have city turf now, and um, just found I love this industry. I love this business, and I love the clients we deal with in this business. And so that's really how I got back into it. Well, I know that, that as a computer geek <laughs> ishness, you're, you're, as a programmer, you're programmed yourself to solve problems. Right. And I understand that initially, the, the, the part of the success was your tenacity to chase down a problem right. and then fix it every single day. Tell me about that. Well, it goes back to the computer business. So what I found I loved in the computer business was I loved to go into a company and identify a problem that they had. So mm -hmm. what was the roadblock? What issue were they having? And then figure out how can we apply a technical solution to this? How can we build a, a technology that will solve this problem? And so it really got me into that mindset of systems thinking, how can we fix problems? And through that, I, uh, I think that's what's led to my love for marketing and my love for building systems in city turf. So when we started city turf, you know, we'd look out in the marketplace and say, well, what are our competitors doing? What's going on in the marketplace? How can we be different? How can we improve? We're this little bitty guy competing against multi, multi-million dollar companies. How can we get out there and, and get people to trust us? And so we did a lot of things different than everyone else. And, but doing something different isn't enough. If you say, oh, I'm going to go do X, well, how are you going to repeat X tomorrow? And when you hire employees, how are you going to get them to do whatever that is? How are you going to have great customer service? So it leads to systems. It leads to technology. And that's what I loved, and that's what we've applied to CityTurf. So we've built this business that's very unique in the industry, and then we've applied these systems, the system thinking, and we've applied technology to making sure that we deliver a consistent client experience. When our clients hire us and we make all these promises in our marketing, we can actually deliver them. And it goes back to my background in technology and learning how to do that. And that's we've built City Turf's foundation using that, that same mindset. That's excellent. Because one of the things that I, I know that I hear from people in the Collin County area is that it's a really unique experience to become one of your clients. So tell us about that. I mean, where does that experience start? Well, it starts the very first time they hear about us, really. So we have an entire system, uh, of course, technology behind the scenes, but we, have an, we really try to sit down and think about if I were buying lawn care services, if I were the consumer, what would I want rather than the viewpoint of, um, hey, I want you to come do business with me and give me a bunch of money. It's really a different mindset. It's me trying to look at it from your perspective. What do you want as an experience as our client? What do you hate about doing business with other lawn care companies? So we really tried to look at it from that perspective, and I think that's what's helped us create this experience. So when you, when you, if you're a prospect, if you're a, a client that's essentially interviewing us, thinking about it, you would, you know, trying to decide if you want to work with City Turf, we have a whole level of information that we deliver to you immediately to help you make that decision. And, and, and one thing that we have to overcome is you don't necessarily know who we are. Right. Everyone's running around making all these promises. So one of the very first things we did that's very unique in the industry is we came up with a guarantee. Mm -hmm. You know, and everybody says, oh, satisfaction guarantee, but that's not really a guarantee because everybody can say it. So we wanted to make something really bold. So many years ago, we came up with the guarantee, and I'm paraphrasing, but essentially it's this. If you use our service and for any reason you're dissatisfied with anything we do for you, we will fix it immediately to your complete satisfaction. What that means is we're going to come see you, we're going to get on the phone with you, and we're going to ask you what the issue is, and we're going to fix it. And after working with you, if you're still completely dissatisfied, if we haven't fixed it, and it's as simple as you say, hey, I'm still not happy with this. I don't want you to try fixing it any longer. I want somebody else to do it. We'll pay a competitor of your choice to fix it. So you find somebody you want to fix it, we'll pay them to fix it. Nobody makes such a guarantee. Right. And, and we do that because we want to earn trust. We want to prove we're different. And we publish this on our website. We publish it in all our print material. It's out there for the public to see. We have to honor it. So that was one of the original. It's one of many things we do differently. I mean, if you become our client, you get a welcome package from us immediately, introducing us, reminding you what you signed up for, just laying out all kinds of information. We tell you when, if, it's gonna, if it rains, we're going to tell you we're not going to be there today, we're going to be there tomorrow, don't forget to unlock your gates. We remind you every month how to set your sprinklers. We remind you of all the services you might want to do around your property. Even Not that you have to use us to do them, but it's not just, hey, you might need to trim your bushes this week. It's really in-depth. If you have roses or perennials or you have something specific, now's the time of year you cut them back. Now's the time of year you have overseed. So we just give out lots of information. Now, don't you offer that kind of information even for somebody that just wants to wants that information as far as, like, when to do certain things right. and 
I mean, how would someone get that, that little bit of information? It's simple. You basically, you go to our website, which is cityturf.com, C-I-T-I-T-U-R-F.com, and right on the front page, you simply put in your name, and it can just be your first name and an email address, and that's all you've got to put in. And what we'll do is every month we'll send to you a, a list of reminders. So let's say on about the 15th of the month, we're going to send you 12 or 13 things you might need to do around your home. And they might even be things that aren't in the lawn care business, but they're just reminders. Now's the time to treat for insects. Now's the time to fertilize. Now's the time to get a certain type of weed. And then every month we're also in a separate email, we're going to tell you exactly how to set your sprinkler, exactly how to program it. If there's water restrictions, exactly what to do. And we set all that, we remind you every month automatically. And then if people are interested, we'll even give them an, an estimate by right. email. We're not going to call and harass them. We'll give them an estimate by email and they can check it against what they're paying now. We also do what's called a lawn audit. So if you want us to come out and look at your entire property, inspect it, and tell you all the trouble spots, anything of concern, we do it. Well, we're a company that will actually come out and see and visit you. Well, that all goes back to part of the client experience. Well, but there's, there, there's another aspect that you guys are really unique about, and that is um, y your workers. Sure. I mean, tell us about that. I want to know, well, I mean, when in today and in Texas, there's a, there's, there are concerns, let's put it that way, about who, who you're hiring. Okay, well, and, and it's, very, it's a very valid concern. So it goes back to that mindset. I'm trying to look, us as a company, we're trying to look at this from your perspective as our potential client. What would you want? Well, <clears throat> when you're, if you're the husband, say you're at home and the wife and the kids are at home, what do you want? You want to know they're safe. You want to know if a guy's in your backyard, he's not peeking in your back window. You want to know if you leave the garage door up. You want to know that your belongings are safe. You want to know that there's a level of protection. You don't know who you're hiring. It's one of the downsides of just hiring any old contractor. You really don't know who you're hiring and what their past is or who their employees are. So one way we differentiated ourselves going way back is we committed to hiring, having a legal workforce, meaning that we committed that our employees either are from this country legal citizens or we participate in a visa program with the United States government to ensure that all of our employees in this country are legal workers, that they're meant to be here. And part of that means they haven't violated any laws in their home country or in our country to even be part of this. And, and along with background checks, all of that goes together to ensure that the type of employee that is stepping foot on our client's property has been checked out and that we know with certainty that you can trust them. That's excellent. But I know you guys take it a step further even with the, the trucks that you use. Sure. You don't just use even the, a standard issue. That you looked at where your trucks were driving and made some consideration there. Well, absolutely. It, it all goes back to client experience. So what is, we talk to our clients, we talk to, this is commercial and residential, and we learned what their concerns are. You know, in the commercial world, our clients, our trucks might be maneuvering through parking lots that are full of employees' cars. Right. In the residential world, they're moving down tight streets. So we said, well, in how can we change this? How can we be different? We've got, in most cases, we got rid of trailers. We built custom trucks so we could get our equipment in and out of neighborhoods without potentially bumping anything, without making a lot of noise in the neighborhood. And all of our trucks are yellow with our lettering all over it. A lot of companies don't use lettering. We letter all our trucks. So when somebody is at your property from our company, they're absolutely going to be in one of our trucks. If they're not one of our trucks, they're not from our company. And that's, again, a safety thing. That's right. And so, but it really, again, goes back to experience. We got rid of trailers as, as much as possible simply because it looks better in the neighborhood. And that's what our clients want. They want something neat and clean. They don't want, they want to know that their cars aren't going to be bumped when we're driving through the neighborhood. And, and so all of that goes into our, our presentation to our client. No, that's excellent. Now, um, did most people connect with you via the Internet or? It's or? both. Uh, we... It really is both. We have multiple people, a number of people that are answering the phone every day and, and over and above that. So I'll give you an example. So this is one of the big differences in the business. If you'll call, so if you're looking for lawn care, just call eight, nine, ten companies. I'll bet two answer the phone and the rest you'll have to leave a message. Well, clients don't like that. They want to, if they've got a question, maybe they don't even need to schedule a service. Maybe they just have a question. Hey, I've got this problem. I don't know what's wrong. I have this brown spot in my lawn. Or one of my employees noticed when they were walking our commercial property, there was an area issue over here. What is it? They want to get us on the phone right now, not in 10 hours, not tomorrow. And so we have a staff of people that answer the phone all the time. In fact, our people came out of the industry. So they, a lot, almost everybody answering the phone at our company actually used to push a mower. They actually used to do maybe spray yards. They actually maybe did pest control. 
they understand, they get it, they can actually answer the hard questions. And so we answer the phones live. Huge difference in the industry. We spend a lot of money to make sure we answer all of our calls. And, and I'll go one step further. So we're really so concerned about this that when we don't answer our phone, we have a backup answering service. And every 30 minutes, we get any calls that happen to go to the answering service. So if all of our lines are filled up, everybody's on the phone, answering service will get it, we'll immediately get notified, and we call that client right back. Oh, that's excellent. So it's a lot of care for the customer. Now, the other thing I'm curious about is um, you guys do commercial and residential, we correct? Do. Yes. Um, have With commercial, are people concerned about you getting back to them very quickly there as well, or what's yeah, the issue yeah, there? Yeah, they're, they're concerned just like the homeowner. Actually, it's the most amazing thing. So we've been in the commercial business for a while, and we're gaining a reputation, and we're getting bigger and bigger clients that have more and more pressing needs and more and more demands. And uh, you know, so we're really attracting a higher and higher level of client. We're taking care of some very nice properties. And so we start getting these agreements as we mature as a company from our potential clients. And these agreements lay out the specs. You're going to do this, this, and this on this time frame at our properties. Can you comply and what's that going to cost? Right. And, oh, by the way, we need you to commit to responding to us in 48 hours. So the first couple times these things start coming in, we're 48 hours. You know, what's the deal? We, I mean, don't you just want us to answer the phone? I mean, we just <laughs> don't get it. Why 48 hours? I mean, it's completely against what we do. I, I, so we just answer the phone. This 48-hour stuff is absurd. We even answer the phone on the weekends, and we have the answering service. And on top of that, for our commercial clients or for any client that might have this need, we have a 24-hour uh, pager system so that we can get a hold of an employee in the middle of an emergency or one of our staff if there's an emergency to take care of a middle-of-the-night irrigation problem or whatever might be happening. There, there are emergencies. So this whole business of 24-hour, 48 response is just beyond me. But that's what's expected in the industry, and that's what's going in contracts, and it doesn't make any sense to us. That's good. That's good. It's not service. Well, one of the things that I want to address is, is notice the way that Jonathan continues to think about the client. Now, that seems like, like duh. It's obvious, right? And yet I, <laughs> I'll just encourage you to realize this. It's not, okay? When you're looking at your client experience, turn around and say, what would I really want? What do my clients really want from my workers or myself in making that experience um, a, a, a glorious experience, not something that is just kind of tolerated? You want to be celebrated, not tolerated. So I see that you're doing that over and over again. In fact, what about uh, all the ancillary services? I mean, what are some of the services you guys even offer? Well, first and foremost, we're focused on maintenance. So if you're a residential client, your homeowner, or your commercial client with a small property or a very, very large property, at the end of the day, you want somebody, the, the clients we tend to attract, they want somebody to come in and take care of the basic needs of my property. And they want somebody to care for this property, and they don't want to be hassled with having to, oh, I see this little need or I see that need and get on the phone. They want a proactive company. Maybe that doesn't mean we're authorized to automatically do whatever that issue is. Maybe it means that someone from our company says, hey, hey, Mike, or, you know, hey, Pat, I just, we were walking the property this month and, or, you know, this week, and we noticed this issue. Would you like it resolved? So first and foremost, we're a maintenance company. We mow, fertiliz we do fertilization, weed control, we provide irrigation, we trim bushes. Our trimming is second to none. There's probably nobody in the market that's a that's trims like we trim. I mean, we really have a reputation. You can ask any of our clients. We have an incredible reputation in, in these areas of maintenance. So we're a maintenance company. We're not focused on every service, but we're focused on every core service to maintenance so that you can have one company to handle all of your maintenance needs. Well, I mean, what about things like uh, specialty services that might be required? Um, how are you guys set up in that area, like chemicals sure. and things okay. of that nature? And that's good because you do see this a lot. What you'll see, there's a move in the industry right now to what's called a mow, blow, and go company, meaning everybody's saying, how can we simplify our business? All we want to do is mow yards. Oh, and if we have to, we'll trim bushes. But we really just want to mow yards. And we, it goes back to client experience. <laughs> you got to go back to that. Okay, it's mow, blow, and go, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're just going to come in, knock out your yard, and get out the door as fast as we can. And we're going to maximize our revenue. And we're not going to do any of this other stuff. It's just a hassle to us. I get it. It would be fun if I could just have a business where all we did was go mowing the yards. Again, it's client experience. Excuse me. It's client experience. You know, it, it's about what does the client want. They don't want that. You know, they want somebody to come in, maintain the yard, have a look at it, care for it. If it needs something else, be able to do it. They don't want to call five or six or seven different companies. So 
something else we do different is this move to be a mobile and go company. You'll see so many companies in the industry, what they're doing is they don't do fertilization weed control, they don't do irrigation, so they, they partner with another company to outsource that. Very common in both of those practices. We brought it in-house. It's the only way to manage it properly. So what we do is, on the fertilization weed control side, imagine this. So you hire me, I'm a big company, we do the full maintenance, and then I outsource to your company fertilization and weed control. You come out to the client property, you fertilize, you spray the weeds, you treat the ants. Then I show up and just mow right over all that stuff. Or I come out and change the, test the sprinkler systems and water it all. Oh. How's that going to work? I mean, you just, you just, the client just paid for that, and you got nothing for your money. So we bring it all in-house. How do you coordinate irrigation and the maintenance? How, if, if I'm going to install all of your flowers, how good would the scenario be if I have to get on the phone with the vendor to do the irrigation and try to get into his two-week schedule? No, we need the irrigation there guy, guy there today to wa get these flowers watered and set it up just to water these flowers, and we need him there next week to double-check them. It's got to be one service. And so that, again, is where we're a little bit unique in that we've brought all this together into one company. That's excellent. I know that, that you would like people to, to go to your cityturf.com. Yeah, the, the easiest thing to do is you can, you can go out to, you can call us, 972-516-0001, or a lot of our clients, a lot of our uh, potential clients just visit our website. It's, again, cityturf, C-I-T-I-T-U-R-F.com. Just visit our site. Right on our site, you'll see where you can get a free estimate. You can contact us. You can ask questions. And again, don't forget, if you'll just give us your, user, your, your name and an email address, we're not going to harass you and we're not going to spam you. You'll get in our program where we're going to send you recommendations on how to set your sprinklers. We're going to tell you exactly how to do it. We're going to give you all the information you could possibly need. So, you know, again, call us or just visit our website, and it's a real easy, quick way to contact us. You can ask for a free estimate. We're not going to harass you. You know, you have to talk to a person if you want an estimate. There's ways to get one very easily from us. We make it really easy. That's good. That's good. But I mean, I, you guys are also pretty licensed and things like that. You got, I know, and some some people think, well, you know, what's involved with getting a, a lawn care in this, uh, business off the ground? You just need a mower and a blower kind of thing. Yeah. But yet, you guys have taken some steps to get certain licenses and things like that. What what's involved with that? What is what is exactly you guys are are. Uh, set up to do? Well, we're pretty much licensed in every capacity that you need to be licensed. And, and, and it is, some of it's easy, some of it's a lot more challenging, and you do see across in the industry. Um, I'll give you What example? example, yeah. I mean, we're licensed with the Texas Department of Agriculture for fertilization and weed control. Um, we are licensed, we have an irrigator's license. Those are the two major licenses that we have, and you do see a lot of companies skip that and, and not do that. Now, of course, a lot of your big professional companies are going to have all of that. But we're licensed in every area that we need to be licensed. Our people are individually licensed when need be. Um, we're staying on top of that. And that's one of the neat things about where we're at. We're not a big national company. We're just a local company. We're big enough that we have redundancy through every level of our company, meaning that we don't have just one spray technician that's going, that if he gets sick and something bad happens and you call and you need something, we're like, ah, oh, sorry, you know, Joe's out of the office this week, but we'll take care of that weed for you in a week. None of that craziness. We've grown past it. Now, that was in the early days. You know, we lived under that constraint. It was a challenge. Most of the companies, uh, we've grown, we're not huge, but we've grown to where we're probably in the top 10% nationally in size. Mm -hmm. And it sounds more impressive than it really is. It's just that most companies are really small, and they have no redundancy. So if something happens to the owner or something happens to the worker, you just don't get taken care of. If it rains too much, maybe they'll see you next week. So we've got levels of redundancy at every employment level in our company so that you can count on us. And all of our employees are trained the same so that you can count on the same client experience. And it goes back to licensing and the heart of our operation where we stay on top of everything, legal workers. We, we're licensed. We, we hire fantastic people. In fact, our, our turnover rate on employees is probably just about the lowest in the industry. We just, people come and stay with us at our company, and all of that is what leads to an exceptional service. Now, one of the other things that you guys have put into the client experience is just the geogra geographical turf that you take care of, because right. you don't go beyond Collin County for pretty much, right? We'll go out of Collin County a bit on the commercial because we have some really big properties, and right. so we can justify that. But for a residential client, we really stay in Collin County and Saxe in the colony. 
okay. okay, to cities that verge out of Collin County. For commercial, we go out to Irving and Dallas and certain markets for large properties, and uh, we attract a lot of that type of client. So, but predominantly, we very much serve the Collin County, North Dallas market. That's good, and and there's a real reason for that. I mean, you had to make some decisions, didn't you, at some point in your in your business that said, look, if we're chasing our tail everywhere, we're not making money, and we're not doing our clients as well, uh, as good of service. Is that correct? Well, absolutely. We're not making as much money for sure, but think about this. If you, if, if your, if your property is 10 miles from my office and another person's property is 50 miles from my office, who am I going to go see more often? Who am right. I going to care for more? Who am I going to walk the property with? The fellow that's 50 miles away might not get the same care. So, Yes, we do make more money by being close, but we discovered that our clients get a far better experience if we'll just sacrifice maybe growing quite as rapidly or spreading out to serve a very tight area so that we can serve all of our clients very, very well. We don't want to jeopardize our reputation, and by spreading out, we potentially jeopardize that reputation. That's great. That's great. Well, one of the things that I want to just tell you guys is it's really an honor to work with Jonathan in every capacity. Uh, I would encourage all of you to uh, not just go to their website, not just get their, their emails, but really ask them to come out and check out your house, your commercial property, and see what they can do for you. When, when we talk about learning from leaders, here's an example of somebody that has taken, a, an, in a sense, an ordinary business and created something very, very um, exciting for all of the clients. All of their clients are taken care of. They come back over and over again. They have a churn rate that's one of the lowest in the area because they take care of their people, right? And so you sit there and, and you just, the examples and the tools that we're laying out here are just thinking a little bit about what can you do to make the client experience something that you're celebrated in. And so, uh, again, one of the things that I just want to encourage you to do is uh, c to connect to Jonathan. Cityturf.com. Mm -hmm. And I know that's been on the screen most of the, the show, and I encourage you guys to, to do that. Also, look forward to uh, the upcoming shows where I'll bring other leaders on that are really all about bringing you tools and techniques to help you grow your business rapidly. I mean, like right now. When we talk about learning from leaders, everything that I've put into this is, ta is designed to be um, ancillary to and in, in addition to marketing without money. It's the, it's the idea of being able to build a business the right way, the profitable way, a way that, that brings about change in the marketplace and to your, um, and, and to your audience and to your, to, your, to your clientele. With that, I just say thank you. This has been Pat Dewar with Learning from Leaders.